Yo, what is good, YouTube? Welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we are going to be ranking the top 10 best power forwards in the game, but including gambling cards, except for GOAT cards, 100 overalls. I try not to avoid those, or try not to include those, but everybody else is included on this list. Uh, there is one exception of 100 overall, and I'm sure y'all can guess who that is, but that's because he's free. Regardless, before we hop into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Help me push towards the 30,000 subscriber mark on the channel. I upload every single day. Tons of consistent daily My Team content. Would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe. Without further ado, let's hop right into it, and let's start off with the number 10 spot, which is going to be Emeka Okafor. Now, Emeka is good. He's got a nice release. He's 6'10", which is not huge, but like not terrible. He's got decent-ish size. He's a little small that's kind of the the minimum i would say size wise is 610 at this point in the year at the power forward position but 74 wingspan's nice great dunker great defender release is very good and the shooting batters are decent only as a base 83 ball though at this point and i will say there's a lot of good gambling cards and a lot of a few good non-gambling cards to be fair as well at the power forward spot on this list but there's a lot of depth to this list so a guy like a mecca as good as he is a little bit of a lower base three ball and sigs i mean they're not bad hard behind the back kobe escape mj dribble style not a bad card but i just think the 80 base three balls a little low that's the, probably the number one critique outside of that um not unbelievable size animation wise good but not insane playmaker or anything like that um uh, missing some badges but if you do add them that'll help i th i like them a lot if you want to argue them a little higher than 10 you probably could but i would put a number 10 uh, i feel like 8 9 and 10 are kind of interchangeable to be honest maybe even 7 as well like kevin garnett at number 9 if you wanted to put a mecca over kg because of a mecca having the better release i wouldn't blame you but the thing is kg's got the better stats and badges 92 base three ball better shooting badges incredibly complete honestly this kg card is really good except his release isn't very good i just don't like it i never have it's my personal opinion some people seem to be okay with his release and i mean i dropped a kg gameplay earlier today didn't honestly shoot great with him right and i've already seen my comments i mean people saying it's me and it might be i just have never liked kg's release it's not a new thing i just i never am a huge fan of his release especially later in the year and if they'd changed his base i'd probably be a lot higher on this card but they didn't and so i just i think number nine is probably fair despite the perfect sigs and near perfect stats and badges i just i can't put him any higher than number nine because i do not love his release like number eight is kwame kwame is not as good of a card as kg he's not he's an inch shorter his stats and badges are not quite as good but his release is much better and that's enough for me even though he is not quite as good on paper as KG does not have as as elite animations he still has good animations and he has a great release and to me that is a difference maker and it is enough of a difference maker for me to give Kwame Brown the edge now Emeka doesn't quite have what Kwame has in my opinion in terms of both movement with that Kimba escape and that Kyrie dribble style but also in terms of um being a slightly better shooter with better base shooting badges and that type of stuff and that's why i give kwame the edge and why i don't give Emeka the edge but again like i said all these guys are pretty close and it does kind of come down to preference even a guy like kp at number seven who i think is a little more equipped to the center position what he's kind of missing is elite is, is playmaking ability now to be fair he's seven four so do you or seven three so do you really need the playmaking ability especially with how good of a popper he is 97 base three ball bunch of off shooting badges and he's a very good defender as well i mean especially at seven three he's gonna guard insanely well on the interior and well in the perimeter as well because of his length now not unbelievably fast missing i mean stats are not quite quite as good but his sigs not amazing release though really good and again he's huge with still very good stats and badges still one of the better power forwards in the game and even putting him at seven feels kind of low because of how big he is i don't know but I put him at seven. I think I love this Mike and card at six. I think he gives you kind of the, the mixture of playmaking with a release with, I mean, size could be a little better at only 6'10 again, but that's everybody here so far, except for KP pretty much. Um, and then I, the thing I like about him is hard mind the back's really nice, just like a Mecca. Good release, just like a Mecca, but better base shooting bad is than a 90 base three ball, which is really, really nice. And I think just as a whole, overall, a slightly bigger player build as well, 245, and he's got a good a bulky player build that helps him. I think when it comes to size, a little bit just, just staying in front of these slightly bigger guys and um knocking them off their spot a little bit more he feels a little bigger than 610 to me i don't know I, I think he plays a little big and i like his release a lot i like his movement a lot i like the fact that you combine an elite release with very good stats and badges even as a base card not missing a lot i mean agent three and handles for days are about the only two important badges you're missing as a whole i like this about george mike and card and i think putting him six is fair but again all of these guys are interchangeable if you wanted to do this and just move them out around in whatever random order and rank them that way i wouldn't totally argue with you so it's kind of all your opinion um but for me i think this is what i'm going with now number five bull bull 
Bol Bol is at power forward better than KP. I think at center, KP is better than Bol Bol because KP is a better interior defender. But Bol Bol's lack of elite interior defense with only gold brick wall, gold removable enforcer is less of an issue at the power forward position because he's got half handles for days. He's got better playmaking ability, a better escape hard and behind the back, a release that is just as good, I think, as KP's as well. And I will say a little bit faster as well. He's an inch shorter, yes, but I think the improved playmaking, the improved playmaking badges and um, that type of stuff matters a bit more at the power forward position, which is why I give him a couple spot edge over KP. His release is still not... I mean, I think... I think uh, Kwame Brown's release is better. I'll say that probably, but I think at 7-2, with all the playmaking the Bull Bull gives you, he's still one of the very best power forwards in the game. So putting him five is fair. Now, number four is Nate Thurmond. The thing about Thurmond is he has, he's the one of one of a couple cards in this list, but he is the first with truly like perfect six. Sorry, the second, because KG has perfect six as well. What this card is, is KG, but I guess not quite with the shooting badges, 85 base three ball, but he is worth applying all the badges to. Agent three, blinders, limitless, open looks, Add those if you can, maybe dead eye. And you got a shoe on him as well. Is going to give him a 93 three ball with a coach and a shoe. Great dunker, great interior defender. Like he is. The thing about him though is the perfect six number one. Jamal Murray behind the back, Trey escape, Francis sides, Kyrie dribble style, John Wall's drag back, but also the pro two fade, but also the really good release. So the combination of all of those things is something that like KG doesn't have a really good release. Emeka doesn't have a super high three ball and doesn't quite have the shooting badges, but also Emeka doesn't quite have, I don't think, quite as good sigs either you know what i mean he's just not quite as good across the board kwame doesn't have the sigs and just like in general i think all of these guys are kind of lacking something nate thurman's not lacking any of it he's absolutely elite and yes i guess okay as a base card he is still lacking the shooting badges but if you get this card he deserves the baddest because he is absolutely exceptional, especially with what his sigs are. Moses Malone is basically an eight Thurmond, but with everything perfect and all the badges as a hundred overall with perfect animations, pretty much, and a release that is good and just 99 stats across the board, every single important Hall of Fame badge in the game. There's just nothing to complain about even as a base card. He's basically, I, he's got the same sigs pretty much as Nate Thurmond. He's basically just Thurmond, but better. Just like Thurmond is a Mecha Kwame KG, but better. So... It's just a progression, and I think Moses is as good as any 6'10 big in the game right now. And I think the only reason he is not number one is, again, because he's only 6'10", because the top two guys are just bigger than everybody else. Well, to a certain extent. Like, I go power forward Wemby here, because power forward Wemby is 7'4", with Pro 2 fade, and solid sigs, and overall good animations is just absolutely elite level ability himself. And I think you just can't not put him at the number two spot, despite how I know he's glitchy. I know he's stupid. And if you have this card, you should probably play him at center realistically. But at the power forward position, he's probably your second best power forward in the game besides these 100 overalls right now. I mean, he just is just like all the other positions. Wimby is absolutely insane. And honestly, the fact I'm not putting him number one is kind of crazy. But I, I know this is probably a controversial opinion and one y'all aren't going to agree with. I think Dikembe is as good as Dark Matter Wimby, if not better. Because here's the thing, Dikembe's release compared to regular Dark Matter Wimby. Dikembe has the better release. Defensive is Defensively, Wimby is two inches taller, yes. But Dikembe is slightly better in terms of his animations, in my personal opinion. Shooting-wise, lower three ball for win. Dikembe, yes. But with a coach and a shoe, it's still a 92. His shooting badges are good and can be upgraded to be incredible. And defensively, he's got every single half in the game. Wimby does not. Playmaking-wise, Wimby is slightly better, yes. But if you add handles for days with those shooting badges, you're still capable enough to play back with, with Dikembe. Dikembe is just as good as a dunker, and I like his release better. It, I think you can make the argument that Dikembe is better than Wimby. He also has Pro 2 Fade, just like Wimby does. These guys are very interchangeable, but I think I would take Dikembe because of the release. I love me a good release, and I think that is why I would still put Dikembe as the top 10 gambling power forward center whatever in the game right now both these guys to be fair should be playing your center position if you have them which includes opens up spots for guys like Moses or even a free Mike or a Bull Bull or Kwame Brown or KG or whoever it may might be at the power forward position but if you are just ranking at where they rank at the power forward position I think Dikembe and Wimby still have to be your number two spots even if they are more so centers so that is gonna do it for this video I hope y'all did enjoy if you did, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon, and I appreciate y'all. Peace.